So, Andrew. Go ahead, Jay, lad. We're going. I'm not going to say boring, but we're going technical because it's in my head at the minute. You the do the technical subject. bit and I'll sit here looking pretty then, Jay. That's what you do best, my darling. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what are we going on about? <laughs> so, anyway, right, I want to talk about drop a shot because... I just do, because I think it's a massive, massive, you're important massive part. You're massive for it, and it does my head in what you're about to tell these lovely lot and yeah. where you put they, them. They just need to be used properly. It were, it's just a big part of my fishing. It's a big part of everyone's fishing. Yeah, it is. Using your dropper shot, your last shot. Yeah, your last one we're talking about, not nothing above it. Yeah. Just that last shot on your clamp. Or yeah. It is massive for how many bites you get and how you see bites. 100%. And they yeah, were talking to, talked to Matt Godfrey, wasn't it, on our... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what is it we do? The, the well, I wasn't like talking, just like ah, listening and yeah. watching. Well, it's ridiculous. We, we, him and Bagger rinsed him, didn't we? To find out what was going on. That dog just jumped in the water. Um, Go on, the dogs. I'm thinking it, it, it's about using them in the right ways, in thinking of a simple way uh, of using your, your dropper shot, wasn't it? And yeah, what yeah. it come down to, the, the, the basics of it, I want to elaborate a bit more. But the basics, as Matt put across, in a beautifully simple joke of a way it, it that that boy does. It takes us like minutes or ne nearly hours, hours to, to like explain. come round to it. So like Matt explained it in one. Yeah, it just went, Boof. that's how it is. But the way you have to look at your droppers, the size of your dropper and how important it is for either bite detection or movement to your rig. They're mm. the two things that it's going to yeah. um, help or hinder, depending on, on yeah. what you want it to do. And the first thing you have to look at, as Matt said, was mega, was how the fish are moving in your peg. That's a big contributing factor to whether you're seeing bites or not. And if you've got, if the fish here, you're loose feeding and it's little fish really and they're moving yeah. freely through your peg, you feel like there's lots of fish present in your peg and you're loose feeding and they're darting about, little droppers are better. Mm. Because you get that sexier fall, which is what you want a sexier fall all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's the biggest thing you want is the sexy fall because you get a percentage of your bite. But then you need to be able to see your bite. I mean, because if, the, the whizzing like that fast anyway, you're going to see Because they're moving, you are going to yeah, see yeah. bites better. I mean, and if they're feeding aggressively, you've got lots of competition, then you can get away with smaller droppers, mm. which will get you more bites as well because of the way it's coming in. Yeah. But also, you, you're still going to have, you're going to see bites because they are moving nicely through your bed. Big bit. So then you can use, I'm not going to include 10s, I'm going to say 11s and 12s. Yeah. For, for most type of commercial sorts of fishing. So 11s and 12s to make it really, really nice and slow falling. Yeah, man. However, everything has to change when the fish aren't moving for you through Big your peg and you need to see over anything. A bait. Yeah. yeah, little skims are the worst. Yeah. That's been what we've been fishing for a oh, lot mate. recently. Changed my way of fishing completely. It, yeah. It's crazy, isn't it? And you do still need that slow fall. That's what makes it hard, is it needs to come in nice. But if you're feeding a very, very accurate pile of bait, which in the winter we do a lot, a hell mm. of a lot, even if it's ground bait and you put a bit in, you're still only feeding a foot square, maybe yeah, two man. foot square on a, on a, on a bad yeah. day. The fish aren't moving very far at all. So if you have a number 11 above your hook length, six inch hook length, you're not going to see them. They're not moving over a foot. They might only be moving two or three inch. Mm. And in the time that they're moving so slowly, they've worked it out that there's something wrong with your bait before you've seen a bite. So they get rid of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you never know that that's happened. Yeah. It's why you have to have number eight this far away. So you see it as soon as it picks it up. Yeah, man. So you, you definitely need to think a lot more about how them fish are behaving in your bag, even so much as changing it throughout the day. I wanna, yeah. Go on, we'll you, come into yeah. them in a minute. We'll have a little talk about our positioning and all that in a minute. But thinking about your dropper shot and what it's doing, it's it's massive to just bringing it down an inch to show your bikes up quicker. Yeah. Increasing the size of it. It's often we're taking another shot off to increase the size of your dropper shot, just to show bikes up better. Yeah, yeah. Huge, isn't it? And the smaller the fish, the more I think you have to do it. Yeah, like, I've, I've never, like, obviously you change the way I've fished all the time pretty much, folks, let me tell you, but certainly since we've been going there, we're not having done that much small skimmer fishing. Yeah. For me, it's always been loose feeding, so it's not really entered my head about sort of like positioning the droppers right. I've always, I've always gone down the, the way of big skimmers, bream, larger droppers, anything else, smaller droppers, so it's coming through the so water. So it comes in sexy, yeah. But then, obviously, Jay takes it to another new level. And obviously, I've always been one for using six-inch up lengths as well, folks, and never, ever putting shots on my up length or anything like that. And obviously, it's only until you like start listening to people like him and Matt Godfrey and Will and Bagger and all that, that, like, well, it never clicks with me, folks, but, you know, like, something like resonates up in your head and you're like, oh, yeah, that's why. You're just literally not seeing him. Even as much as four inch up length you know I, I can't use a six inch up length now i'm always oh, using yeah. four inch up lengths 
but even that's not right sometimes you're still missing out on them which you're gonna yeah go through as well so played about I mean? the, the little tricks that one's talk about yeah yeah is that sides of hook length obviously can dictate where your shot goes yeah your last shot for years and years and years i've been well happy putting hot shot on hook length that there's nothing wrong with it so you're putting proper shot and not stocks on yeah yeah always, always shot yeah, on a hook length, and yeah. this time of year when when it's the type of fishing we're on about, not yeah. not when it's a bulk in the summer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When it's strungy outy, bulk and droppery type fishing, I'll always, nearly always now have a six inch. And then you put that last big put dropper on your hook length. And why are you doing that? Why don't you just use your shorter hook length? Because it straightens them loops out. The loops are massive for you, aren't they? Yeah. He, he shouts at me all the time, folks. You know the like little tag ends. Getting on these, Rich. Can you zoom in on them? Can you zoom in on that? On your big doofer. This is what he means. I've left them. To be fair, I've not left them long on purpose. That's how long I have them. But he'd like really make sure he tightened it and shortened them even more than that, yeah. wouldn't you? Because you're getting that. You don't want it to catch over through. it. But yeah, I want it fluent. So I'll often put a shot just underneath my hook length. Do you know what I mean? Just on under the knot on my hook length sort of thing to straighten those two loops out. Yeah, man. And often move it closer as well. I mean, six, yesterday was mine at Blundell's was the best example yesterday. I was fishing a 414's float and I had um, nines and tens like in a, in a Yep. Spread taper that we're using all the time now. And my bottom 10, I started with a 16 inch hook length on and the knot was half um, under the knot, so five and a half yeah, inches yeah. away. I've got about four and a half foot. Yeah, so I've got five and a half inches and I can see these indications on my flow. Little indications and a bite of develop. I mean, eventually I'd catch a fish. So it's telling you in the first instant, isn't it? And then you, you, you're readying yourself. Yeah, but it was wrong, completely wrong. As soon as I, I bit my hook length off, because I don't like moving shot either. You can't move shot on a rig. No matter what anyone says, you can't move shot. See, that's another thing. For, I ain't got time to blooming rip up there. I need, I need put them new... up lens. I don't time any <laughs> up lens. But yeah, bit me off left off. Put a new one on. Yeah. Six inch. And this time I put it three and a half inches away from my hook. Yeah. I was getting an indication just as quick when I was coming back with a fish twice as fast. Just because you're seeing that. Because you see something happen. Right. They, they, again, they're not moving right, very right. far from me peg. They're staying within my little ball of ground that I've put in. Yeah, yeah. And now it's showing them up, so I'm getting a bite twice as fast. I think that's the difference. Other people who get like different rigs out or go a little bit more over depth, maybe a little bit off bottom to try and, you know, identify them bites. But the difference is always about that last it's drop. always your dropper. If you're getting indications on your flow, yeah, I like that. Mate. sometimes the line is yes. Mm. But often their but bites are just not seeing them. Using more loose feeding, not if you like putting ground bait in and fishing a, a bed of bait. Yeah, got good liners are liners, they can happen, I mean? whatever. But if you're getting indications and you strike and miss them, yeah, yeah. then they're liners. Yeah, yeah. But how often with them skimmer bites do you think your floats move lift up and there's one on the end? They just sort of shake it like crucians, aren't they? they? Just sort of shake it, that's well, it. Well, I think little roach are the same and big anything in the winter when it's tight, accurate feeding. Not being shy and putting bigger droppers on or bringing them closer. Not being shy and putting them on your hook length. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Massive, massive thing for me. And it, it does, it, it's the difference between five and ten pound. Just the position of a flipping shot, which is horrible. Nuts, isn't it? But it is. It's the efficiency and seeing things as soon as they happen and making bites. I use that word a lot, but magnification of bites. Like that. The more you can make it look good, so you strike at it, mm. the better. Because your float's moving no matter what. Yeah. And that, that's when fine bristles and all that come into it it's droppers and bristles sort of are used in tandem because the finer you can go on a bristle the more you see yeah. the bigger and closer you can go with a dropper the more you see yeah, and yeah. if you can find the happy medium for that day what's right on the day with yeah, conditions definitely. and size of shot yeah then i think you got it right mm. I th have we just covered that i think we did i think that's everything i want to talk about yeah i hope you haven't confused you too much i'm gonna you're try right. some blooming six inch up lems up again aren't i need some bigger up lens. you're all right you'll be able to get some pretty tight ones too Yes, please. We're sorted on that. Oh, but yeah, that's our thinking of dropper shots, and we hope it helped a bit. But probably didn't. Probably just confused everyone even more than we were. Trust me, if I understand it, these are definitely understanding it, Jay. And I understand it. Oh, good. You do the technical bit, and I'll sit here looking pretty, then, Jay. That's what you do best, my darling. <laughs>